Hey, what's up guys? Okay, so I want to discuss two conditions today that are often misdiagnosed and overlooked. And uh, some people with TOS have these conditions as well, or they have these conditions thinking that it's other conditions and it's, it's, it's so commonly misdiagnosed that it's hard to tell whether you've got multiple sclerosis, Lamite syndrome or TOS or a combination of all three. So what I want to do is discuss these two conditions, which is MS and Lamite syndrome and hopefully give you a better understanding of it and you can take this information go to your doctor tell him your symptoms and then you can tell him that you think you have either multiple sclerosis Lamite syndrome or TOS and you can be a little bit more informed when going to the doctor and if they're a little bit confused you can give them information and try to help them figure out what to do and diagnose you properly so multiple sclerosis also known as MS is a condition where your your um, immune system attacks your central nervous system so your immune system thinks that your central nervous system is an intruder in your body and it starts attacking it and tries to get rid of it and that's not a good thing for your body because this affects your brain it affects your spinal cord now this also affects the covering of the nerves now that white fatty substance that covers your nerves is called the myelin and when your immune system starts attacking the central nervous system it goes directly for the nerves and it attacks the myelin sheath itself and when that is affected it causes so many problems because now the nerve is exposed and it affects the signals between your brain and those muscles between those nerves now when you've got those openings of your nerve and the covering is gone scar tissue replaces that covering and that essentially blocks those nerve signals so between your brain, your spinal cord and those nerves, the signals don't get sent properly. So you can get phantom pain, you can get random pain. Uh, there are so many different symptoms of having MS that on average people that start getting symptoms to their first diagnosis takes about seven years. That's like the average time a person with MS gets diagnosed properly from the first time they get symptoms to, to when they officially get diagnosed with MS. So. That's one of the things with having MS is you have random pain. Now there are a lot of other symptoms associated with MS as well. Um, I've been doing a lot of research into it and it's not only the random pains because of your nerves. It also affects your vision. You could have blurry vision. Um, colors may appeal, appear less vivid, more dull. Um, you could have pain in your eyes when you move your eyes around. It might be very painful to move them. Um, there's a lot of strange sensations that you get with MS. You could have shooting pain down your arm, you could have electric shock pain, and that's where Lamite syndrome comes in. I'll get into that now. Um, you could have t tingling, fatigue, um, heart problems where you start exercising and you feel extremely weak and fatigued MS straight away. You could have walking problems, uh, trouble keeping your balance, uh, extreme fatigue, vertigo. There's a whole host of problems. Um, you could struggle to think clearly, be extremely depressed for no reason. You could have bladder and bowel irritation out of nowhere. So as you can see, there's a whole host of problems that come along with MS and it's very difficult to diagnose. So writing down exactly what you have and the symptoms that you have on a daily basis can really help getting a proper diagnosis and getting you on the road to recovery. So when you go to the doctor, they could do blood work. They could test for Lyme's disease, which is uh, other problems that are associated with MS as well. Um, an MRI. The doctors can also do a, a spinal tap which measure the, measures the spinal fluid going between your spinal cord and brain and they can determine this and see if your immune system is harming your, your nervous system which happens with MS. So definitely write down your symptoms, get checked um, and get a proper diagnosis. The doctors can also do a, a spinal tap which measure the, measures the spinal fluid going between your spinal cord and brain and they can determine this and see if your immune system is harming your, your nervous system, which happens with MS. So definitely write down your symptoms, get checked, um, and get a proper diagnosis. Okay, the next condition I wanna talk about is Lamite syndrome. It's not a well-known syndrome. If you don't have it or don't have any symptoms, you've probably not never it. heard of it. So Lamite syndrome, also known as Lamite sign, um, it's also known as barber, barber chair phenomenon, because what happens is, if you tilt your neck forward, you get a sharp shocking pain down, down your back into your limbs. So it's called barber, barber chair phenomenon because 
if you ever been into a barber and they use the the clippers on the back of your head and you get a fright it's like that shock feeling and every time you put your head forward you get that buzzing feeling and electric feeling through down into your limbs so it can be caused by multiple sclerosis because of the nerve damage and the myelin sheath that covers the nerves and uh, the scar tissue that develops and the blocking of those nerves cause that that interruption and sends that that jam signal which basically feels like electric shock so it's very easy if you've got Lebit syndrome to trigger one of these attacks where it sends a shock down your spine you could just move your neck in the wrong way like more likely when you're moving it towards your chest and you get that shooting feeling you're just doing certain to certain things you could just twist in the wrong way and you can get that shocking feeling which can be quite scary when it goes down the left side and it feels like you, it's your heart and going into your into your arms and it's also quite painful because it's quite quite a shocking thing like you've like you've touched an electric fence it's not a life-threatening condition but it can be very painful so with time and with treatment and care if you, that pain can be eliminated and can be reduced so that you can live a normal life so what are the few basic things that you can do to help yourself if you have Lamit syndrome it's quite simple you can uh, start off with a tens unit that that's an electrical pad that you stick onto your onto your traps and rhomboids and around the, the neck area and you turn on the electrical signal and it, it not only massages the muscle it relaxes the muscle and also it interrupts that signal between your your brain spinal cord and, and the muscle so you can be in severe pain and use the tens unit at the right frequency and it actually feels like it's being stimulated and it's relaxing and it takes that pain away because it blocks that that nerve signal where the pain is so that's a great thing that i use myself uh, for my tos and i also had a slight bit of libido syndrome when i had my tos because of all the compression and um, problems with my neck and i used to get that shocking feeling all the time and then you twist wrong and then you get tingling and then the numbness comes and all of that so the tens unit really helped me the next thing you can do, you can get a soft neck brace just to support your neck at work or if you're at home laying on the couch, you don't want to be holding your neck up the whole time and then moving in the wrong way. So a neck brace just to hold it and just take that pressure off while you're in recovery can do great things for you. Um, deep breathing, deep breathing techniques like diaphragmic breathing help so much because same thing with TOS. If you're breathing with your chest and your chest is rising, that means that you're using your scalene muscles and obviously they don't perform the main respiratory function and so they get overworked your neck tightens everything tightens and if you've already got problems with your neck that's just going to aggravate everything more so deep breathing takes the pressure off your neck by using your diaphragm you can put one hand at the top one hand on your diaphragm and make sure that the lower hand is moving up and down in your diaphragm and your chest isn't it takes a lot of practice it's quite difficult but once you get it right you're going to notice considerable effects whether you've got limites um, or TOS. Uh, stretching and deep tissue massage can also help tremendously because it just relaxes all those muscles and lengthens the muscles. Lengthened supple muscles really help take the strain off your neck and your back. Lengthened supple muscles really help take the strain off your neck and your back. Doctors could also prescribe medications that you could use, but I would say start off with the stretching and the TENS unit and the deep tissue massage as a start and then go to your doctor and see what they say because what they can do they could put you onto steroids which has a million other side effects anti-seizure drugs muscle relaxers antidepressants all of these are the the first things prescribed when you have Lamit syndrome and ms and they could help take some of the pain away they could help um, for right now but over the long run there are so many negative side effects that you could be stuck on these medications not feeling better and have other side effects from the medications so it's a lot to think about but start off with the natural things first if you really need um, to be put on steroids or or muscle relaxers and stuff then obviously you have to but uh, just know that there's consequences with everything that you do so i hope this gives you a little bit more information and you can use this information and take it to the doctor and at least be a little bit more clued up about what your body's experiencing and what you're feeling and you don't walk into the doctor's office and then they tell you what they think it is and then send you from doctor to doctor and it takes you seven years to get properly diagnosed. Use the information. If you have any questions, please comment below or message me. Now there's one very important mineral that I forgot to mention and that's B12. Now B12 plays a huge role in our overall health and 
taking V12 on a, on a regular basis can actually improve a lot of conditions that a lot of people in the world have today. Um, B12 helps with heart health, it helps with DNA synthesis, it helps with digestion, hair, skin, nails. It can also help with depression and how your mood is stabilized. It also helps with uh, how our brain functions and how we remember things. It, it affects our memory in a great, in a great way. Um, it also helps with adrenal fatigue and a lot of people that have anxiety and panic attacks um, more adrenaline is released than normal so having constant panic attacks reduce, re, uh, releases so much adrenaline that the adrenal gland becomes fatigued over time and that can happen with stress as well and having adrenal fatigue causes a lot of problems and you feel ex extremely exhausted all the time and you feel like you can't get up you can't do things you've got no energy and uh, B12 actually stabilizes the adrenal can gland can actually help with anxiety and panic attacks by relaxing the muscles and help helping feed the muscles and the nerves. Now taking B12 if you have MS is really great because MS attacks the central nervous system and B12 helps the nervous system and it actually helps the nerves and helps damage nerves specifically. So taking it can not only help with your pain and the scar tissue, you can actually help with your body feeling better and recovering with a lot of symptoms that you might be feeling and take just take that edge off if you're struggling on a daily basis so that's the video for today i hope it really helps you and uh i'll be posting a lot more regularly we've just hit 240 subscribers and uh, i just wanted to say thanks for all the support from everybody i know it sounds like 240 is nothing compared to some people on youtube but uh I connect with nearly every single one of my subscribers and we video chat and I try to help everybody that I can on a daily basis. So 240 people that can spread the information further and maybe we can help other people that are struggling. I think that's, that's quite an achievement. So thanks for everyone for the support and I will see you soon.